name is uh, Reverend Beverly Mlale. Um, I'm a pastor at Papa Center, um, in charge of the care and counseling uh, ministry. Um, I love Jesus. I really love Jesus. He's my best friend. And um, I did a flail. Well, I was a, I started, I was a pioneer. I started in 204 uh, and I did it until 209. Yeah. And it's been a beautiful experience all through. All right. My name is um, Jacqueline Gadoni Mulandi. Um, I'm a stay at home mom. And um, I did a flail in 2019. So, um, how did I join or even get to hear about a flail? Um, very interesting. It was, we were coming out from church, and then a friend of mine was like, Ah, Bev, see, we just go and uh, do, go and sing. There's a thing called a flail. And I was like, What is a flail? And he said, at, at, They say it's Africa. Let's worship. I was like, ah, it's something to do with Africa. So, uh, I mean, that intrigued me. And I was like, okay, let's go do. And so I think our meeting was at ICC. That's the first time. And it just went. We got there. I went with her. Um, she, we are both altos. So we just joined. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and that's the thing. I, it's. I think because it was a choir, you could hide within your, <laughs> your voice in the choir. <laughs> and so, yeah, we, we, we started and I, I just, I liked it. She left, but I continued. Um, and the reason why I continued is because when they shared the vision and why they want to do, why they're doing what they're doing, I, I, I was sold in and uh, my journey began there and it's been a beautiful journey. I had um, about a flare long time when we used to attend the Sitam Valley Road church service. But um, I think at that time I was, my children were still young and uh, I, I love singing. I, I was in the choir from when I was when I was in class three, I was, I was doing choir, singing with choirs. Eh? Uh, so 2019, around February, I just listened to a, um, a Travis Green song, um, a Nigerian song that was saying, you have done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. And every day I saw God's goodness and I, I wondered, what have I done for God? In my heart, it was laid that I should sing for God. So I decided to find out what about a flail. I remembered a flail from Zamani. And I called um, a flail Nyeri. I, I think I saw there were auditions going on in a flail Nyeri. And I spoke to the one in charge and he told me, it's too far, because then how will I come from Nairobi going to Nyeri? Because yeah. I didn't know what, how a flail used to work. Yeah. So then he told me, why don't you try a flail Nairobi? Mm -hmm. So then I looked and I saw the last audition is up. Yeah. And um, I decided that, that day, uh, I, we were doing registration online. I registered, it was accepted, so I was ready to to uh, be present on that Sunday for the, it was at Sitam Parklands. That was the last audition. And um, when I got for the auditions, I was in shock. I was the oldest and I wanted to turn back. Already my daughter had, uh, had done some little training on me and I was confident. But when I got to Sitam Parklands, yeah. I wanted to turn back and I asked, Am I the oldest here? <laughs> then we are told you have to pair in three. Yeah. And I've, I've watched other circular auditions and I knew now this one, mm. the way I see it, it's usually very tough. Yeah. This one I'll just be told to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so we teamed up yeah. and um, that was it. God had that purpose, that plan for me from when he laid it in my heart.
It's interesting you talk about auditions. Right. In two or in two or four, we never did the auditions. You know, we just signed up and we came and um, and we sang. We we're put in in our different voices and we sang. Then um, when I then again came back to do in twenty in two or I think seven. I think that's when we started auditioning or thereabout. And when I was told that, yeah, I'm being paired, I kind of thought, hello, I sing. <laughs> Why am I being auditioned? Haven't you heard my voice? So that was really interesting. Yes. I kind of felt intimidated about right. that. Right. And just like the way you're saying that it was, you know, you feel like, I'm going to be sent home, you know, I'm going to croak. And they're like, <laughs> these are the people who are singing uh, off the other time, you know, in the last couple of uh, um, choirs. And so I, it was very interesting. But I like the fact that they took that turn because that what said to me was that this is a serious initiative. It's a serious um, course. And we're going to bring sweet melodies to God. Right. And that, for me, was amazing. Right. It's just not just coming, but we need to be professional even in singing. And so that, yeah, it was a good, a good turnaround for me. Okay. Yeah. The, what intrigued me was um, that we, it's the fact that the idea of having different countries from different places singing at the same time singing and praising God at the same time. I mean, that's so powerful. Can you imagine the gates of hell shall not prevail? <laughs> the gates, I mean, it was, it, that for me was powerful. Um, and then getting different countries singing. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Okay, um, why Africa? For me, is because... Um, many times people think there's nothing good can come out from Africa, you know. And um, there's the thing that, because it's a dark continent, we are, life doesn't happen, this is, we, are, we are Stone Age. But for me, why, why I felt like this is a, such an important course is because it's saying that we have something that we can give and we can actually bring it out, out of music. And music is part of Africa. I mean, go to the different parts of Africa. I mean, there's beautiful sounds, beautiful music that comes out. And I, I, so for me, that is what I was like, yes. And then on top of that, singing to God. That is important for me. And I said, I want to be in this mission. I want to do this because um, we are going to send a different message. Yes. And that's what we need to do. And so I like uh, Africa. Let's worship. I mean, it's calling us to come and worship. Why not? Why not? The process was not easy because... Um, I'd have to come all the way from Kitengela to Nairobi. But as I said, God had a purpose. So he gives you the ability. He gives you the ability to get there. Having had church responsibilities, I had to make sure that I'm through with them and in time mm. for the practice. Mm. Um, personally, everything started on time. In the 2019 Afleo, yeah. yeah. everything was just... I don't know, it was almost perfect. Timing was good. People came early. That's right. Um, practice, was, um, practice was quite a grill, uh, but um, the teacher, teacher Isaac, yes. mm. gives each voice good direction. That's right. Um, and um, it, it was not that much of a challenge as, as I thought it would be. Um, being a mom, you have to be home early. Yeah. Thank God my spouse is very understanding. Mm. He would bring me over. Sometimes uh, I would drive over. So everything just became easier and easier as we went along the way. Um, introductions were good. They were done well. Yeah. So we were in sync. Mm. And um, we encouraged each other. Yeah, as a group.
being paired in a small group was uh, at the beginning it was a bit scary yeah. because i'm not a a chama person so i thought <laughs> is this a kind of a, a kachama of sorts eh? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was i really uh, i'm not very good with chamas yes. but the minute we got into fellowship yeah. i think as long as you have two three people who are committed yeah. and you encourage each other yeah. everything becomes easier we we met in in different homes yeah. and we we would pray together mm. we would um encourage each other mm. most of the time i would listen to the stories because they are younger people yeah. so i would listen to what they are going through or how they are finding a flow yeah. or how a flow has been in the past um i i enjoyed being in the fellowship mm. it was not the chama that i thought yeah. was there it was just wonderful fellowship accepting each other and no judgment and just having fun so i was energized at 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 the age of 49 i was i was energized yeah. i was almost like a 25 year old <laughs> <laughs> like yeah that. there was a lot of energy yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah for us small groups they actually never did happen um it happened much later again i was there in the beginning and then um i think i did two or three different small groups mm -hmm. um and the first one was pretty exciting i think we were i was in a group where everyone was excited to be paired to be together mm -hmm. and so, yeah to be in the same group and we were like oh what can we do and we had a, i think a very good we, not i think we had a good leader and then i think the second one um did pick up as much um people were i think guys were we were all in different spaces and so we didn't quite do what needed to be done but the third group was the one that she cut because now we were all singles right. <laughs> and they're almost the same age yeah. and so it was so much yeah. fun eh? um again for me just being able to um be in a group of uh, same age yeah. interacting together understanding where we are coming from most of us had uh, been a flow the previous a flow and so it was like a recap you know we're coming back as a wow. group and so yeah. it was fun um i really enjoyed um the groups i i love the part where we used to pray together yes yeah. and uh, and our leader would always call us mm. during the week to find out how we were doing for me that was just amazing and um yeah it was it brought us closer and every time if, if you didn't know people doing practice at least you have your small group mm. <laughs> and so you'd always fall back to your small groups because at least because i mean when we come for practice we are this big group of right. people and you can easily get lost right. or feel alone but then when you know that there are people who are you know and have been interacting with so that really was a amazing time so i love the small groups um i had never attended any afleo night ever but i knew they they used to be wishing that i could but uh with children with family yeah. uh, that's not an excuse though i think once you purpose to do something you can do it um the process missions was just fantastic that's true going to praise and worship and seeing people hungry for for the love of god or just singing to he, to god it was just amazing i up to today i would if i was called upon an afleo mission i would go for one i'm not so sure whether it's because i, I i'm i'm not in the praise and worship mm. but just the experience of going for missions um preaching christ to people mm. through song it was amazing it was amazing um the the night the event then on the on the on the night was also amazing seeing people coming the young the youth it was just amazing people are hungry for god that is what i saw um 
we had, uh, there's a point in the event that they bring in um, the, the, f the, f the three flags. Yeah. One was um, the Lion of Judah. It was colored. Mm -hmm. That's when it hit me that we were actually singing to the King of Kings. Mm, that's right. It was not just singing to anybody. It was the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. That was, that hit me hard. Yeah. So those are some of the wow memories of, of Afleo 2019. Now, highlights, men, they are many. Why even do I even start? You know, being uh, <laughs> in, in a flare for so long, that's just amazing. I think for me, let me start. Uh, one highlight, mm. greatest or biggest highlight is the day of the event. Just, you know, the whole process, we've gone through it. And then now, we are, then that night, we are coming together. Oh my God. And then seeing people coming to join you in singing. Mm -hmm. That was melodical, if you ask me. It was just a beautiful um, time in the presence of the Lord. Um, the choir, people are just excited that we're going to give of ourselves in that manner. That was a highlight. Every year that I did, that for me was a highlight. You know, you know, doing all that we've done and then coming to that, that day, that night, that for me was a highlight. Um, that's the biggest highlight for me. And then the other one is people getting saved mm. yeah. during the night. Mm. People getting healed. I mean, because would pray for people mm. and guys would get saved people would uh, um, get healed there's just a lot of transformation in 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 those who are listening and us who are singing because it was just not it was just not for the people but even for us singing and i remember when i was having a running nose yeah. and i was like why will i be able to sing well you know and when when i was up on stage and i started singing went i for, for i don't know where, where it went we finished our first set second set and then when you know that break we take um, i didn't feel anything and i was literally healed mm. during the time we were singing and for me that 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 is amazing yeah. those are highlights prayer for me i i felt it was we 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 should have given it more time um, people would maybe come in late and find the prayer is already over or but I think it should have been allocated more time because it's, it's an important aspect of, of praise and worship mm. it, it ushers in um, the Holy Spirit yeah. so I felt it should have been given more time what I liked about the, the way we prayed was that we prayed for Kenya, mm. we prayed for Africa, right. and the rest of the, of the world. That was a mind opener for me because whatever happened, whatever would happen to Kenya, mm. I was in, we, were, we, were in, we are in control of it through prayer. That's right. we, we speak, we declare. Mm -hmm. That is what we are called to do. We have the authority to do that. So that was a mind opener for me. When it comes to the prayer aspect and how it was brought into a flail, it was, it, I think for me, worship or singing and prayer cannot be separated. They are, they, they intertwine. It's, it's a place where you, you, you come before the Lord in reverence and you, you, you just, want to be in God's presence and allowing the Holy Spirit to be there. I think that was a beautiful aspect that we incorpor incorporated during our flail and making it part of our lives. Because even in our small groups, even there's a part where they actually put it in as in now it was a time where there was, we had moments where we'd be talked to about prayer, you know, would have sessions and people come in and talk, teach us about prayer. And I think that is so important. And it, 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 it brought a different aspect. It brought us even closer to the place where uh, God would want us to be. And I think 
Um, my, my thinking, having prayer incorporated was the best thing that we did um, and making it part of our lives because God, God is calling us to pray. He wants to hear us. He's, he's, he's waiting for us to, his arms are open wide and just saying, I'm here, talk to me. And that's a beautiful thing, mm. yeah. I've always thought um, prayer is for the people around me, for the church, but mm. this went as far as Kenya, yeah. Africa, and the rest of the world, and you're in control to speaking into the atmosphere, mm. declaring for, for um, uh, the breaking down of strongholds. That was awesome. Mm. That was awesome. Mm. I just felt it needed, it needs more time. I had a frustration a little bit of time, you know, when, like, when we started, I think people quite, were, I think it was either were too excited, too happy that we're all coming together so we'd forget that, you know, to keep time. But over the years as we moved on, the time aspect, I think because it was addressed, they then became very cautious about it and would always, if you're there on time, and people are still walking in and all um, practice was, if, it's, if practice was starting at two, for instance, I'm just giving an example, um, and there are those who are sat in and they're waiting, they wouldn't wait for the people who are coming in late, would actually have to start practice. And that for me was amazing because we, we had, have seen us grow from, you know, from two or four until now. Things have just moved. What the feedback Afleo team or the organizers receive, they always would implement. That's the one thing that I really celebrate mm. uh, about it. They never, it wasn't taken as an offense, but it was like, let's get to improve. Mm. And that for me was amazing. So yeah, mm. uh, the aspect of time was a bit of a challenge for me at one point and, and I kind of frustrated, but then, over the years, it was just amazing. People would get it in place, and so that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, and if somebody would ask me if um, ask me about a flow and whether they want to join or not, I tell them, please don't even think twice. Join. You never know what you might find. I mean, believe me, there are people who have actually gotten married and met <laughs> couples. <laughs> <have> met. <laughs> yeah. And so I would think. I would tell them not to hesitate. Mm. Come be part of this amazing um, initiative. It's one that will, will change them because it has changed me, my thinking, my, you know, um, how I view things. And also it's giving back to, to the people mm. and to God. Mm. It's a way of giving of yourself and allowing God to use you um, yeah, there are many ways you can be able to support a flow. There's either you can come, if you're not able to sing, there's other aspects, there's the part of prayer. You can come and join the prayer team. There, there's a time, there are also different uh, op opportunities, I think, in a flow where you can um, be a service, service uh, what is it called? Service, service team. Support, support team. Yeah, support team. Um, you can... You can join that and it's amazing. You can serve in that, yeah. that mm -hmm. way. Um, so I would say come. Come with what you, how you are yeah. and come and serve. Right. Because they have different uh, pockets of, of service. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, don't, and don't shy away. Don't shy away. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen quite a number of people, lives transformed because of doing that. Mm -hmm. I would say... For someone who's not so sure whether they should join a flare, um, if the Lord has laid it in your heart, he will see it through to the end. Regardless of whether you have uh, challenges of finances or challenges of, uh, of uh, uh, being a, a, a mother, time, um, God will, will make every crooked part straight. Yeah. That one I can It's a guarantee. Mm -hmm. because he's the one who's laid it in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I, was, I, I had purposed to be in the, in the support team, mm -hmm. but uh, because of uh, COVID-19, 
that was not possible. Mm -hmm. But I, I was really looking forward because on that night, um, the service team, the support team was, was um, the, the way you'd want to look down on them. Mm. For me, it was, they, they came through for me. Yeah. They came through for me. So I felt that's a place I could serve. So just like Bev said, there are places where, there are many pockets where mm. you can serve mm. in, in a flare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I realized with, with a flare in 2019, most of the people are young people. So financially, they might not be, you know, able to. They just have enough to get them there and get them back. So we try doing fundraising just within ourselves. Um, it, it, it didn't pick up quite well. But um, I think it's, 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 it's something that um, it's rewarding. Mm. You may not see the rewards today, but it's rewarding. Yeah. It's, it's giving back to God. We cannot give him enough, but that is one way of giving back to God. So I would encourage, I would encourage anybody who has felt the call to support yeah. not to hesitate. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. there are many there are many areas where yeah. finances are needed. Yeah, within just putting together that one night event, yeah. finances are that's also true necessary. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to add on to that and say it's important that we because this is a ministry not just for a few people; it's for everyone, mm -hmm. and there's a place for everybody. Um, if you're not able to sing you can be able to give somewhere. And partnering with Afleo is, uh, is, is, is an amazing thing to do. Um, you can give of your time, you can give of your finances. And, and I think when somebody does that, or even, even corporates do that, mm. it, it, it says that this is not just about an individual or a particular kind of people. It's just saying, come, we are Kenyans, we are Africans. Come, let us do this together. Mm -hmm. Let us um, support one another to be able to give God the glory and praise because that's what we mm -hmm. have been called to mm -hmm. do. So it's, it's a good course for people to actually partner with 